Good morning. We're here at Book Expo with Dr. Joanne Deke, author of the award-winning book, Your Fantastic Elastic Brain, Stretch It, Shape It. Joanne was just telling me a little secret about this book. The pages in this book, just look at these colors, they're just gorgeous. But the pages in the book are made with terra skin, and it's a, no trees were harmed in the creation of our book, so something to think about. So let's talk about this book. Where did you get the idea for your fantastic elastic brain? Well, I work a lot with schools around the world, and part of the issue is that most children believe that whatever they come into the world with, with their brain, that's the way it is. So if spelling is hard, it's always going to be hard, and why do you bother me? And so part of what is happening is the new brain research is showing that the brain is very elastic and there are what we call windows of neurologic opportunity and that means that certain ages if you use certain parts of your brain they're more stretchy then than at any other time in your life and the first decade there are many areas that need to be used and it changes the brain and so kids tend to avoid exactly those things that they should be doing because if something's hard it's a signal that that needs to be stretched and it's like a muscle and it does stretch so once they know that, instead of saying, I can't do this or I don't want to, they go, in fact, I had a five-year-old say to me, oh, that part of my, my brain really needs to be stretched. I better get going, you see. And so it has changed kids and classrooms and parents and their perspective on things. Well, that was one of my question is, is there a particular moment you know, yes. that just really resonates with you where you were sharing the book or reading the story with kids where it just really sort of okay, this is why I did it, this is what I love about it. Do you have a story like that? I do. I have a little second grade boy, his name was Joey, and his teacher asked me to work with him because I'm a psychologist, and his teacher said, you know, he's lazy, work with him. So I sat down with Joey, and, and Joey felt, and I used the spelling example, Joey was a terrible speller, and every time the teacher would say, take out your spelling book, Joey would try to go to the bathroom or something. And <laughs> sounds so, like my daughter. Yeah, and so I, I explained it to Joey, I read the book to him, and he went back in the classroom and then the next day when the teacher said take out your spelling books and she expected Joey to say I have to go to the bathroom or something Joey whipped out his spelling book and he starts writing his spelling book words over and over and she looked at him and said Joey what are you doing and he looked at her and he said do you know how small that part of my brain must be I gotta work and he said he said it's he said it's like a rubber band because I use that as an example it's like a rubber band and I gotta stretch it and, and that's the kind of thing that, that makes all of this worthwhile. Now, how difficult is it, I mean, because you're reaching a second grader with a pretty high level concept. That's how why I you... use rubber bands. <laughs> I actually have, I, I've been given balls of rubber bands by pretty much all kinds of kids. They make them for me because I show a picture um, of the brain that it, when you take the top off, it just has all these rubber bands in it. And some are small, and some are medium, and some are large. And the key is, the ones that aren't as big as you want them to be for your lifetime, work on it now. And they so get it. I've, I've had four-year-olds get it. Because I've got this. And I go, see how, how this, do this. See how easy it is? You've got a big one in your head. See this? Try this. And they go, oh, it's hard. I go, look. But look what you can do if you keep doing it. And they absolutely get it. Now, is it hard writing nonfiction for such a young audience? It would be if I hadn't had years of experience. I've worked for 30 years with kids. And the first time around, it was really hard to explain to a four-year-old about your brain. But after a while, you learn what gets to them and what they understand. And um, so it's not, had I been 22 writing this, uh, yeah, but it, it's easier for me now. Well, you said earlier that you had worked in schools around the world. I mean, do you find this, or books like this, a universal concept? I mean, is there a cultural difference in how it's perceived, or...? The concept is universal. How it's perceived, there are cultural differences. Can you give us one? <laughs> Excuse me. In some cultures, asking kids to do something that they don't have a natural talent in is not prized. 
So in, for instance, in some of the villages that I worked in in Africa, if you were the best um, knife carver, you didn't try to do other things early on to stretch other parts of your brain. You just honed, excuse the pun, you honed your skill in knife carving. What this is trying to say is, look, in at least in the United States or in westernized culture, children now don't know what they're going to be asked to do as adults. And it behooves all of us who work with children, I call us neurosculptors, it behooves all of us who are neurosculptors to help children use every part of their brain while it's very stretchy so that as they go through life, regardless of what they have to face, regardless of what they have to do, they have made each part facile enough to, to handle it. We're not in a, a, a village kind of situation anymore where, okay, you're good at this, you do only that, you're good at this, you do it. So, so the so world has changed and therefore, for most cultures, this has great relevance, but not for all. So now, 10 years from now, we'll be able to see if college freshmen change their oh, majors less. Because, absolutely. Because they'll have, you know, they'll have learned more about themselves and what they truly love. And or, the other way to look at it is, maybe they'll change it more because they'll be more able to do anything. That's true. That's true. So, so what's next after the last sequel? Um, we're oh, doing wow. the second magic decade. The first magic decade is a zero birth to ten. Okay. And then the second magic decade is 10 to 20. And some things happen in the brain between the ages of 10 and 20 that never happened before and will never happen again. It's, it's really, the research is incredibly interesting and there are key things that have to happen in that second decade. Now, will that be a picture book as well? Yes, or? because we're finding that middle school kids and high school kids are reading this as much or more than primary age school kids. That's in fact, cool. uh, several universities are using it now. That's excellent. Isn't it? That's, and we, we said neat. it was I for ages like 5 that. to 8. And now we get, you know, Rutgers just announced they're buying it for their, um, for their uh, education majors and their psychology majors. And, you know, so there's a variety. And, and, and I have to tell this story. My 40-year-old nephew, who just retired from the Air Force, he's a big, tough guy. I gave it to him as a present. I've written several books, but I gave him this one. And he was often reading it while I was talking. And he interrupted my conversation. He said, Aunt Joanne, this is an important book. You have to stop what you're doing and just get out there and sell this. And he goes, people need to read this. He said, and not just children. He said, I learned so much. And this is this 40-year-old guy who's traveled the world. And you know, But it was like, he was stunned that his Aunt Joanne had written a book that was important to be out in the world. That's a great story. <laughs> it and it was. He was just... Oh, that's fun. He's, he's a good boy, but yeah. Excellent. So I, it's not about money making. It's about... Um, it's, it's important to get things like this in the hands of kids. That's why Mom's Choice Award parents. was so was so meaningful, because it meant that there's... You know, mothers are neurosculptors. There's this group of people who said this is important. And I love that you term. You just made my day. And you made mine. Thank Thanks you. for joining us, Joanne. Thanks.